light speed. We call it the cosmic speed limit, the absolute fastest thas thing in existence. 300,000 kilometers per second. Nothing can go faster. But here's what most people don't realize. Light is actually slow. Painfully so when you are dealing with cosmic distances. It takes over eight minutes for sunlight to reach Earth, four hours to reach Pluto, and to cross our galaxy, tens of thousands of years. Now imagine this, one light year per second. That's not just fast, it is impossible. It breaks every law of physics we know. But if you could somehow travel at this speed, what would you see? What would this impossible journey reveal about the true structure of our universe? Everything we think we know about the observable cosmos might be wrong. In one second, we have done something no human has ever imagined. We have traveled farther than light travels in an entire year. The solar system vanishes behind us in a heartbeat. The sun, that massive ball of nuclear fire that dominates our sky, becomes just another star, one point of light among thousands scattered across the darkness. Think about what just happened. We passed Proxima Centauri, our nearest stellar neighbor, in 4.24 seconds, the closest star to our sun, the destination that would take our fastest spacecraft 6,000 years to reach, is already behind us. We are racing through what astronomers call the local neighborhood. Barnard's star flashes past in six seconds. Wolf 359 passes in eight seconds. These are names that took decades for astronomers to catalog. Stars so distant that their light takes years to reach Earth. We are crossing those vast gulfs in moments. The perspective shift is staggering. From Earth, these stars appear as faint dots that require telescopes to see clearly. But at one light year per second, we witness the truth. Space is mostly empty. Even at this impossible speed, we are flying through void after void after void. Each star we pass represents a complete world system. Alpha Centauri is not just one star. It is three stars locked in a gravitational dance orbiting each other across billions of kilometers. We witness this cosmic ballet, compressed into seconds, watching what normally takes decades of orbital motion. The isolation becomes clear. At normal speeds, the distance between stars creates an almost impenetrable barrier. Radio signals take years to travel between stellar systems. A message sent from Earth to Proxima Centauri takes over four gear to arrive. Any response takes another four years to return. That is an eight-year conversation delay with our nearest neighbors. Sirius blazes past at 8.6 seconds, a brilliant white star twice the mass of our sun, accompanied by a white dwarf companion so dense that a teaspoon of its material would weigh five tons on Earth. In normal space, these two stars orbit each other every 50 years. We witness their entire relationship in an instant. The red giant Arcturus appears and vanishes at the 37 second mark. This massive star has exhausted the hydrogen in its core and expanded to enormous size. If it replaced our sun, it would engulf Mercury's orbit entirely. Yet even this giant appears for just a moment in our impossible journey. By the one minute mark, we have traveled 60 light years from Earth. We are now beyond the range of most naked eye stars visible from our planet. The constellations that have guided human navigation for millennia have completely dissolved. Orion, the Big Dipper, the Southern Cross are all meaningless at this distance. The stars we are passing now are invisible from Earth without telescopes. Red dwarfs, the most common type of star in the galaxy, finally become visible as we approach them. These dim, long-lived stars make up 70% of all stellar objects, but they are so faint that none can be seen with the naked eye from Earth, despite being relatively nearby. We are beginning to understand the fundamental loneliness of space. Even traveling at one light year per second, 
we are still surrounded by emptiness. The average distance between stars in our region of the galaxy is about four light years. That means even at our impossible speed, we encounter a new star only every four seconds on average. This is our cosmic prison. Not the boundaries of our solar system, not even the edge of our galaxy, but the sheer vastness of space itself. The distances are so enormous that even light, the fastest thing in the universe, becomes a slow messenger crawling between the stars. At the seven hour mark, 26,000 seconds, we reach the center of our galaxy. The journey reveals something extraordinary. What appeared as the Milky Way from Earth, that faint band of light stretching across our night sky, is actually an edge-on view of a massive spiral structure. We have been living inside a cosmic pinwheel, unable to see its true shape because we are embedded within it. The spiral arms become visible as we speed through them at our impossible velocity. These are not solid structures, but density waves, regions where stars and gas collect like traffic jams on a cosmic highway. The Perseus arm, the Sagittarius arm, the outer arm, each one containing billions of stars, each one spanning thousands of light years in width. We are witnessing the galaxy's architecture unfold in fast forward. Star formation regions blaze with the light of newborn suns. The Orion Nebula, visible from Earth as a fuzzy patch in the constellation Orion, reveals itself as a stellar nursery where massive clouds of gas and dust collapse to form new stars. These nurseries dot the spiral arms like beacons, marking where the galaxy continues to grow and evolve. The galactic center approaches a region hidden from Earth-based telescopes by vast clouds of dust. But from our perspective, traveling at one light year per second, we see through the obscuration. Sagittarius, a star, the supermassive black hole at our galaxy's heart, dominates the central region. Four million times more massive than our sun, it anchors the entire galactic structure. Around this monster, Stars orbit at incredible speeds. Some complete their orbits in just 16 years, racing around the black hole at velocities reaching 7,000 kilometers per second. These stars experience gravitational forces so intense that space and time warp around them. Their light stretched and compressed by Einstein's relativistic effects. We pass through globular clusters, ancient spherical collections of hundreds of thousands of stars. These stellar cities formed when the galaxy was young, over 10 billion years ago. They orbit the galactic center like satellites, their stars so old they contain almost no heavy elements. These are fossil remnants of the galaxy's youth, when the universe was fundamentally different. The scale becomes overwhelming. We are racing through 100 to 400 billion stars, compressed into a journey measurable in hours. Each star potentially hosts its own system of planets. Each system could harbor worlds with conditions suitable for life. The numbers are staggering. More planetary systems than we could ever catalog. More potential worlds than we could ever explore. At 100,000 seconds, just over 27 hours, we reach the far edge of the galactic disk. Behind us lies everything we have ever known about stellar astronomy. Every star visible from Earth, every constellation that has guided human navigation, every celestial object that has inspired human wonder, all of it contained within the structure we have just traversed. The realization hits. Our entire galaxy is just a stepping stone from this vantage point, the Milky Way appears as it truly is, a spiral galaxy among countless others. What seemed like the entire universe from our Earth-bound perspective is revealed as one island of stars in a cosmic ocean. The isolation between galaxies dwarfs even the vast distances between stars. The nearest major galaxy, Andromeda, lies 2.5 million light-years away. Even at our impossible speed, 
it would take 2.5 million seconds to reach, about 29 days of continuous travel. 29 days to cross the gulf between our galaxy and the next major structure. The emptiness between galaxies makes interstellar space seem crowded by comparison. Andromeda finally appears after our month-long journey across intergalactic space. This massive spiral galaxy contains over one trillion stars, more than twice the stellar population of our own Milky Way. From Earth, it appears as a faint smudge barely visible to the naked eye. Up close, it reveals itself as a cosmic metropolis, larger and more complex than our home galaxy. The local group flashes by, our gravitational neighborhood containing over 80 galaxies bound together by dark matter. Most are dwarf galaxies, small collections of stars orbiting the larger spirals like Andromeda and the Milky Way. But even this local collection spans several million light years across. Galaxy clusters appear and vanish. The Virgo cluster, containing over 1,300 galaxies, passes in minutes. These massive structures represent the largest gravitationally bound objects in the universe, held together by invisible dark matter that outweighs all visible stars and gas by a factor of five to one. Superclusters stretch across our path, chains of galaxy clusters connected by filaments of dark matter and gas. The cosmic web becomes visible at this scale, vast networks of matter separated by enormous voids that contain almost nothing. We are racing along the universe's largest structures, the scaffolding upon which all cosmic architecture hangs. At this speed, the edge of the observable universe, 46.5 billion light years from Earth, takes only 1,500 years to reach. 15 centuries to traverse the entire visible cosmos. What seemed like an impossibly vast universe from Earth shrinks to a journey shorter than the time between the fall of Rome and the present day. But reaching this boundary reveals something profound. This is not the edge of existence. It is simply the limit of what we can see. Light from beyond this horizon has not had time to reach us since the Big Bang. The universe continues, potentially infinitely, beyond our observational reach. The cosmic web extends beyond the observable horizon. Dark matter filaments stretch into regions we will never see. Galaxies exist in numbers we will never count. The structures we have witnessed, galaxy clusters, superclusters, the cosmic web itself, represent only a tiny sample of what exists. Our observable universe, vast as it seems, might be infinitesimally small compared to the true cosmos. We exist in a bubble of visibility, seeing only the fraction of reality that light has had time to reveal since the universe began. This impossible journey reveals the universe operates on scales that dwarf human comprehension. We exist in a cosmic bubble, seeing only the tiniest fraction of what is actually out there. The speed of light is not just a barrier to travel, it is a barrier to knowledge itself. Subscribe now to keep exploring the universe's hidden truths with us.